Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to debug Windows crashes. You have an application, it's delivered to your client, and it crashes. You would like to know what happened and how to fix it. So, let's assume this is your client, and a client has your application. They run it, it produces an output, and they execute whatever they do with the application, and the application suddenly crashes. Now you would like to know what happened. So first of all, you have to get the crash information from your client. So you can ask them to provide this by looking at the event viewer. They open event viewer, go to Windows logs, applications, and they should see an error message you see it's the time right now. And there's a bunch of information. Let's just copy this right now into our notepad. Okay, we don't need this anymore. So, what does this information hold? Value is application name, the time version, and the timestamp and other informations, but most critically, exception code. This is a memory access violation. You can Google this exception code. The fault offset, which is basically the starting memory address, plus this one is where the application crashes. So let's see. You request this information from your client. They give it to you, and you will know that, okay, this is the application that crashed, this is the version number. So what you do is, that was the client, now you're on your own server, and you have archived your executables. Let's assume you didn't archive because it takes up a lot of space, instead you want to build them on the fly. So you start Visual Studio, and you open your application, of course, right version, check it from your repository, and so on. And you load the correct version, and you build it. You build a solution, and you have the exact same copy as your client had. Make sure you build release, because probably you deliver the client release version. Also make sure you use the right platform. So. If we open this one, there you go, File Explorer, 64-bit release, and this is our release. Okay, let's move them into our archive. I'm doing this to demonstrate that you don't have to have anything in your build location. I deleted that, there's nothing there anymore. Close this. And I go and file, close solution. I close the Visual Studio solution. So what you do now is go to your file that you have just built or fished out from your archive and load it in Visual Studio. Okay? Then you start debugging. Application is running and Everything is fine. You go to Debug, Windows, and Modules. In the Modules, you should see your own application here. And you should see the base and the end address of your application. Let's copy this one. Copy value for the base address. Okay, so this is our notes. So let's make a note here, base address. We also had a fault offset, right? So if we do this and we have both of these addresses, then we can determine the address of the crash. 
And this is the crash, is basically the summary of these two addresses. Use a calculator if you have to, but since it's just ending all zeros, it's easy to add together. Okay, this is our address where the crash happens in the memory. Now, what you want to do is go to debug, Windows, and disassembly. It says this assembly cannot be displayed at runtime, so you need to pause your application, break, it stopped. Now it says, okay, this assembly is here, so you can see some assembly and also see code. Okay. So we now took this address from here, address of the crash, copy it in the address, hit enter, and the magic happens. So it says this is the line assembly that causing the crash. This is the line in the code in C, C++, that causes the crash. So after this, it's easy to open your solution and find the same line. Just look at the surrounding code and you can determine what happened. So what happens here is we have a new pointer. We release the pointer and after release, we're trying to access memory and Windows says you have no business poking there so I'm going to close you now hence memory access violation and that was simple this is how you find the problem and this is up to you now to fix it it is up to your logic to find out why you want to modify something that's released why you want to release it in the first place so it's up to you I'll show you how to find it one more thing that's important Let's stop this and close the solution. Don't save. Okay, let's assume you have archives, but your PDB file is not there because it's a separate location. Go with PDB. I move my PDB there. So bring your exe into Visual Studio, debug, start instance, then you pause execution. It says application is in break mode and this assembly is not available. This is because if you look at the modules, symbol status cannot find or open the PDB file. Simply right click and say load symbol. It will try to find the original location where you built, but it's not there, so you have to manually locate it. If you have a separate symbol server or separate location for the symbols, you go there and open that location, and now says symbols loaded. This assembly, you can see, again, we have access to the code, so you fix now that you have C++ as well, not just assembly.